how's it going? Thanks for taking a few minutes for us today. Uh, no problem. So tell us what this pre-draft process has been like for you. Obviously, you played the one season, and then, you know, the deadline comes for guys to decide, you know, if, if they're going to stay in or, or go back to school. Uh, what kind of feedback have you been getting throughout this process that, that made you feel like you're confident in your in your choice to stay in the draft? Uh, I mean, I say to, to start to into the first one, I mean, it's been long, uh, exhausting, but, um, uh, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a challenge I'm embracing, you know, it's fun. You know, traveling to all these states, uh, you know, visiting different teams, cultures, facilities, just everything, you know, it's, it's surreal. You know, everybody dreams to be in this position and, um, just want to take advantage of it. Uh, as far as the other part, I mean, um, I'd say I had a pretty good, uh, I guess understanding of the potential of this draft for me, uh, you know, before the deadline. Uh, I think I had like maybe eight or nine workouts already under my belt before like the combine. And uh, before the deadline was done, I think I either had like 10 or 11, something like that. So it was like, I had a pretty, you know, good grasp of like, you know, what teams are thinking of me, where they see me. And uh, I guess the type of starting position I would have, you know, uh, coming into the NBA. You know the, I guess the, the foothold I'd have. Um, what was it like playing, you know, for a penny and, you know, playing kind of in that environment? You know, um, playing with Imani, uh, playing, uh, playing with Jalen Duran. You know, guys who kind of, you know, kind of took pressure off of you a little bit because of, because of the expectation for those guys. And how do you? Um, you know, translate, you know, playing a lot, you know, in the paint, um, you know, in Memphis, even though I know you did place on the perimeter a lot as well, uh, to playing exclusively on the perimeter in the league? Oh, um, I don't know where we heard exclusively on the perimeter, but uh, I'm flattered. Uh, no, but to, <laughs> to start, I mean, Memphis is a, a pro-oriented environment, I'd say, uh, to really just start off. Uh, everything about it is just like, preparing people for this next level. And that's really why I chose it. Uh, Coach Hardaway, Coach Brown, Coach Sheed, you know, Cody Topper, these are all people that have, you know, either played or coached at the highest level. And, um, you know, like they just prepare you for it. And, uh, you know, playing alongside other pro high level talent like Imani, Jalen, uh, Lester, you know, is in this draft. Um, just everyone really, it's just like, you know, it's preparing me to, you know, play against this high level talent. You know, I have someone like DeAndre, a really experienced person I'm going up against in practice and everything. And it's just, they're pushing me to become the best player. And uh, I mean, that's really what it's about, you know, getting better each and every day. Uh, you know, Coach Hardaway has a lot of knowledge. It's really just w uh, whether or not you're willing to, to listen to him. And uh, I definitely want to have the open ear every day in practice. And uh, that's the mindset I approached it with. Uh, you know, I went in just listening to all the, you know, the knowledge, wisdom of the NBA that he had. Uh, you know, he's been there, done it, you know, a crap ton of experience, you know, that he definitely, uh, you know, gave to us, and uh, it's really just whether or not you're willing to listen to it. So I say overall, Memphis is one of those places where you're going to get out of it, you know, what you, you know, put into it and, you know, um, just the, the type of ear you have. And, you know, if you want to get better, you'll get better. Just as a follow-up to that, where do you feel like your game is good right now and where do you feel like your game has the most room to grow? Where can you continue to get better and better? Uh, I'd say to start, I'm trying to improve my jump shot. Uh, I definitely say I've experienced, you know, really great improvements over the last few months. Um, you know, teams are recognizing it. I feel like it's something I don't have to really talk about. Uh, it just shows in the workout, stuff like that. But I definitely say still improving on the consistency, form, fluidity, everything like that. Um, as far as, like, where I see myself, you know, like, I guess currently, like my current strong suits, uh, defensively, just the – the uh, you know variety of positions I can guard, um, you know, and just like overall in offense, just the ability to create for myself and others. Uh, you know, I consider myself a creator. You know, I see the game differently. Uh, I just feel like I I see how plays are gonna open up. I mean, the cuts, back doors, everything. Uh, and overall, I just feel like you know my IQ is something that's gonna you know really carry me throughout this league. This is a quick follow up. Um, how is it? You know, being in a position where like some mock drafts have you as high as like a late first rounder. Today, you're working out for a team that's the only team in the league that doesn't currently have a draft pick right now. You know, uh, I guess I guess what's your mentality going into 
a workout for a team like the Jazz, you know, just knowing that they don't have a pick, but, you know, they're wanting to get a look at you and see if, like, you're you're worth acquiring one for? Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, in terms of, like, how I approach it, I mean, I just do whatever my agent tells me to do. I mean, I'm the player, man. Like, I'm, I'm not doing the behind-the-scenes stuff. You know, it's just my job to go out there and do my thing, you know, just – show I know how to play basketball, show my current, you know, tools where I can go, where I can grow into. And um, I feel like that's what I've been doing. Uh, in terms of, you know, workout like this, I, mean, I don't really, like, I'm not going to lie to you, up until, like, I think a day ago, I think I found out that Utah had no picks. Like, I'm just going to go play basketball, man. Like, I'm just, I'm here to play. I love the game. You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, Utah has no picks. Let me not go there. And my agent, you know, it tells me, like, yo, you know, uh, might be a good opportunity. Just go play basketball. I mean, I'm someone who's just going to shut up and put up, really. Like, I'm not – I don't think I've ever complained about a workout. I mean, it shows. I mean, it's my 18th one. But, um, I mean, overall, I'm just I'm just traveling. I, mean, I go wherever that, you know, needs to be, you know, gone. So, overall, I mean, I'm going to continue this, this journey. And uh, Utah is just another stop in it. Has your agent given you any kind of idea of, like, kind of where your draft stock is looking like, like whether it's late first round, early second round, or anything like that? He has. And <laughs> yeah, has, oh, uh, I'd say it's it's just looking you know good. I feel like it's a, a strong foothold of what I want to. I think from what we've been hearing, uh, we can expect. I mean, it's it's really volatile at the moment. You know, I feel like the last week is really when things start getting more concrete. But I'd say like a volatile like twenty to forty, about. I mean, that's just what my agent says. I don't want people going around saying Josh Mana saying this. You know, I'm just. You know, I don't, no worries. Don't come I, didn't, at, don't come I didn't mean me. to put you on the spot. I'm just legitimately yeah. curious nah. to see like where this team might need to, you know, where yeah. they might be looking to trade into. Nah. So don't shoot the messenger, man. I already know Twitter's gonna be on me nah. after this. I'm like, yo, wh- who does he think he is? Like, no worries. Thanks for taking the time today. Uh, so first off, just tell us a little bit about your game, what you're looking to show teams like the Jazz, what you feel like you do well, what you feel like uh, you're most trying to show you've improved upon. Um, I think first and foremost, what I bring to the table is a, you know, a great maturity, um, doing whatever it takes to win, um, just doing whatever the coaching staff front office asks of me and, uh, trying to play great toughness, great physicality, make the right plays and, um, you know, make shots when I'm open. And then as time goes on, I want to become a better shooter, knockdown shooter, consistent shooter, and overall improve my feel for the game on both ends of the floor. Um, I think that's going to come with time, but I'm looking forward to that journey. Hey, how much uh, contact have you had or what's your relationship like with uh, Eric Pascal? Uh, it's funny. I just talked to Eric the other day. Um, I've been talking to him a lot throughout this process. Um, it may not be for long periods of time, but um, me and him, you know, just chop it up here and there. Um, I say a couple things to him. He says a couple things back. It's like a... Big brother, little brother relationship. Um, but that's my guy, and that's somebody I look up to. Has he, I mean, given you advice about kind of this process and what's what's going to be coming for you? Yeah, he gave me more advice about the playing aspect more than just the entire process. He just told me to, you know, do what I do best. Um, don't try to do anything outside of my element and, you know, make shots when I'm open and, you know, keep the game as simple as possible. What, if anything, did he tell you about this jazz organization? Or is it one that you were that you had some familiarity with beforehand anyway? Um, I mean, I've had familiar with, I, uh, been familiar with you guys um, just based off of, you know, you guys being at the top of the Western Conference for so long. Um, but when he came over, he was, he was happy. You know, uh, he talks about, you know, the camaraderie on the bench. Um, you know, obviously his, his best friend is Don, so he talks about him a lot. But... Um, when I do talk to him, it honestly isn't about uh, Utah Jazz, but when I have asked him about it, he, he feels like he's in a great spot. And just a quick follow-up. It seems like Villanova guys who come into the NBA, there's like a certain kind of way of thinking about them that they're all. it feels like the fundamentals are always like pretty solid with them. Is that, do you guys feel like that's the case? And if so, why is that kind of consistently the case? Um, I think uh, we definitely consider it the case just, you know, the work and, and time and effort we put into, you know, the Villa, Villanova basketball program and, you know, taking on the coaching and putting our egos to the side and understanding that we, what we have to do in order to win in order to get better. And um, 
I think that aspect of just, you know, taking coaching and taking accountability for our actions on and off the floor um, translates in, into the next level and it, you know, it benefits everybody. Tony Brown. What did you learn um, just kind of over the four years, you know, as you went from a role player to, to a main guy and, you know, a guy who played off the ball to a guy that this year played a lot with the ball in his hands, um, you know, especially um, uh, especially down the stretch and in the tournament, and how can it help you uh, going forward? I think uh, the reality check early in my, my career at Villanova was the biggest thing, thinking that I better I was better than I actually was. Um, and so it, um, it humbled me a lot, um, understanding how to play without the ball, first and foremost, how to guard all five positions, um, being accountable. And then as time went on, Coach Wright giving me the ability to make plays and you know get the reps in practice, and then being a go-to guy, making decisions. And I think that just benefits uh, me at the next level by taking on any challenge the coaching staff wants me to take. If they want me to be a guy that can, they can be a go-to guy. I can do that. If they want me to be a guy that plays defense, and you know knocks down threes and makes the right plays, I can do that as well. I can do whatever is needed for the team, and I've been used to that all my all five of my years at Villanova. Is it is it weird going through one of these uh, like pre-draft workouts with one of your Nova teammates? It's not weird um, at all. Honestly, we talk every single day. Ever since me and him parted ways, um, he was working on Miami. I was working on Santa Barbara. Um, we just been talking about you know everything that's been going on on both of our ends, and you know keeping each other up and keeping each other afloat. And um, it's just. It's amazing to see uh, where Colin is now, especially you know how his story has been going on and on since he's been in high school. So um, it's amazing. Why were you working out in Santa Barbara? Um, it was where my agency was. Um, everybody was held at with BDA Sports, so it wasn't just me there. It was other guys, and also P3 Sports Science was there. So I got a chance to work out with Packy Turner, uh, work out with a lot of pros. So it's a great opportunity.